hello. Collecting my autumn leaves. You've got a bit scattered to the winds. <sighs> I really, I mean, I, I always enjoy researching all my shows, but this in particular was something that I couldn't believe I didn't know anything about it. I mean, well, anyway, I'll say when it starts, but the more I read, the more I was like, how have I never thought about this before? Let's get my beautiful leaves lined up. Uh, oh yeah, green and, green and yellow pen, isn't it? <clears throat> I said for you to bring some autumn leaves. Everyone agreed on Facebook this morning that it is pouring down everywhere. If you're in the UK, you are wet. It's like a guarantee. So don't worry about it if you haven't got any leaves. <laughs> They're only for looking at. But you can look at mine. Uh, that one, that one, that one. Oh, thanks for liking this. You lovely people. Um, what did I say? Oh, there we go. Green and yellow pens. <clears throat> I've got my experiment, which is terrible. I'm not going to make you do it. I'm just going to show you it. And... myself in a right pickle this morning with story time. It's just bits of leaf and paper falling everywhere. I think it's, I think it's probably going to be the same today. I can't see any way around it. Uh, that can go on there. Yeah. Right. What time is it? I've got everything that I need. Brilliant. Hopefully you have too. Yeah, so this question, I'm just going to quickly read through my notes and make sure that I don't forget to tell you anything because I've learned a lot, as usual. Um, this is weird. Leaves, I mean, obviously we know, because we can see, leaves do change colour in autumn and they, and they do fall from the trees. But there is quite a good argument to say that those statements are wrong, that leaves don't change colour in autumn and that they don't fall from the trees. How can that possibly be that that's, you could argue that those statements are wrong? Just have a think about it while I read through and make sure that I'm gonna tell you everything you need to know about leaves. I'm trying to get the perfect angle. It's just making it worse, isn't it? Just step away now, just step away. Okay, uh, Yes, oh yes. Mm -hmm. Got this. I'm gonna remember all this for you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Right, I got this. Let's do it. Yeah, no problem. No problem. <laughs> I am now a tree expert. Okay, I'm going to flip you around. Are you ready? Uh, wait, where did I literally just put my... You just heard me get the green and the yellow pens out. And I've just used the yellow pen and then, just, I don't know, thrown it somewhere. And I've put the green pen back. I'm just, I'm just a disaster. I don't know, I don't know how I do it. Surely other people don't live their lives like this. Where, guys, where's my yellow pen? Like, in my hand. Seconds ago.
Right, flipping around. Bum -ba -bum, ba -ba -dum -bum -bum -bum. Hello, science lines. Hello, I am Lara. Uh, I'm a science teacher, right? To to like GCSE, A level. I've got loads of biology in my science degree. I can't believe that I didn't know any of this. Uh, we're learning about autumn leaves. This is the show with the Lego story time where I tell you about a thing that I learned this week. And this week you asked me to learn about autumn leaves. And I'm so pleased that you did. I've discovered some incredible things. I said at the beginning, there is an argument. You could say leaves don't really change color in autumn and they don't really fall from the trees. I'm going to explain to you how these things that seem to be the opposite of what happens can actually be true. Um, I'll tell you quickly what I knew about trees and greenness and that. While I'm doing it, uh, you, if you've got a piece of paper, any scrap paper, and a green pen and a yellow pen, can be doing a very simple activity uh, to help you understand what I'm about to tell you. So get a green pen and draw, uh, they're gonna have to be quite small leaves, like maybe sort of no bigger than a 2p, but leaf shape, okay? Don't colour them in, just draw the outline of two leaves in green pen. You don't have to do this fast because I'm going to chat to you while you do it in a sec. And then what I want you to do is get the yellow pen and cover each leaf in dots. I mean, admittedly, now I'm saying it, it really doesn't feel like it's going to take you very long. But get it? Lots of yellow dots inside the green leaves. Look at the screen for a sec. That's what you're doing while I'm telling you about what I knew. All right? So... If you ever read Funny Bones, excellent, excellent book. This, this is a bit like the beginning of Funny Bones. In leaves, there are set. <laughs> You're supposed to be able to see that, it doesn't really matter. There. In leaves, there are cells, right? I'll draw, I'll, I'll write it. Here is a cell. In the cell, there are chloroplasts. Chloroplasts are just, you can think of them as like little green dots. They're all going to look the same in this terrible drawing that I'm doing. Chloroplasts. So inside, a leaf is basically made of loads of, loads of cells all stuck together, like we are, like most living things are. So inside all of these cells, you've got chloroplasts, which are green dots. And the reason that chloroplasts are green is because inside the chloroplasts, is this pigment, which is basically just a posh science word for like a dye, a colour, a particle that has a colour. And the name of the pigment is chlorophyll. Chlo ah, I've, I couldn't spell it this morning and I looked it up and now I, and I didn't, I didn't look it up. I forgot to look it up. Chlorophyll, can't remember if it's one L or two. I'm going to do that like you're doing exams so that whoever wants to can just choose that and I'll be right. Inside a leaf, there are cells. Inside the cell, there are chloroplasts. Inside the chloroplast, there is this green dye particle called chlorophyll. And chlorophyll does this amazing thing. What chlorophyll does is it captures light from the sun and it uses it to make the plant's food. I mean, you, you probably know that too, but it's the chlorophyll that does that. Uh, it's just amazing. Light is a wave, but it's also a particle. If we ever do A-level physics, we'll talk about that. But a particle of light lands on the chlorophyll, and the chlorophyll uses that energy to start sort of various chemical processes happening, which m makes the plant able to kind of gather particles from inside the leaf and stick it together to make sugar, right? So in the same way that we take sugar and eat it, and that's our food, the plant makes its own sugar using the energy from the sun, and it stores the sugar, and then when it needs it, it releases it, right? Um, so that's what I knew, okay? I knew that leaves were green because of this particle, this pigment called chlorophyll, and that was doing the capturing of the sunlight. That was all I knew. I didn't know anything about why leaves turn yellow, why leaves are red, even like really why they fall off trees. So that's what we'll talk about now. Uh, if you've done your little diagrams, get your green pen again. No, that's just my chin. Get your green pen, and on just one of the leaves, only one, uh, put lots of green dots. So one of the leaves you're just leaving with yellow dots. One of the leaves we're doing lots and lots of green dots as well. Because this is the first thing that I didn't know. It's all those beautiful autumn colours you see. Ooh, well, not all of them, actually. Um, but the certainly the yellows and the oranges, they're already there. They're in the leaves right now. Look at any green leaf. It's probably got a lot of yellow pigment in it. 
you just can't see it. So if you finish your green dots, um, this is a bit doesn't really work on camera. You just have to stand as far away from these things as you can. Like put it right on the opposite side of the room to you and stand right back and say what you see. Here we go. Stand on this chair. So what, what do you think? One leaf clearly, they've both got the same amount of yellow dots on, but one leaf clearly just looks green, doesn't it? Whereas the other leaf looks yellow. Yeah, that's, that's a very simple model uh, for what is happening. In the summer, you don't see the yellow. It's called a uh, carotene. It's the pigment that is yellow and kind of orangey. Um, it's the same thing that makes carrots orange or turmeric yellow. Um, you can't see it because there's so much green in the way. So because your, our eyes can't make out the yellow. But yeah, in, uh, the, in autumn, we'll talk about why. When the chlorophyll sort of disappears, then all we're left with is the yellow leaf. That's a bit, I didn't know this. Um, the red leaf, the red leaves are different again. So if you see, I'll show you down here. Um, you see leaves change from green to yellow. That's what's happening. The chlorophyll is dying. So the yellow or the orange that was already there has been revealed. If you get this beautiful red, look at that, splendid. That wasn't there already. So it was a good model because we didn't put any red dots on our leaf and that is why. The red is a pigment called anthocyanin. I think, I think I'm saying that right. Anthos, anthocyanin? Anthos, anyway, this red pigment uh, only appears in autumn and apparently it's very good at helping the tree to get as much energy as it can from its leaves. So uh, if it's been a very sunny summer and if it's been very dry, the sugar sort of solution, the sugary liquid in the leaves is really concentrated. It's not the same with us. Like if we get very dry and very hot, we get dehydrated, right? We lose moisture. Um, it's the same with the leaf. So if it's been a dry, hot summer, the sugars are really concentrated. So the tree wants to get as much energy as it can from these sugars. So it produces these anthocyanins, which are red pigments, because they're really good at extracting all the energy. So I didn't realise, but you, that you hear talk about like autumnal displays, people going to the countryside to see the beautiful colours of autumn. Uh, they change. Sometimes, if it's been a really hot, dry summer, they will be particularly dramatic and gorgeous and red because the trees are releasing more of this anthocyanin. Yeah? <laughs> right. Um, so, well, I get. let's talk about, yeah, why... Why doesn't the, well, let's talk about why leaves fall from trees, right? Why leaves fall from trees is because in the winter time, for a start, it might start to snow. And if you've got loads of leaves pointing at the sky, the snow will fall on your leaves and make uh, your branches very heavy and it could break your branches off. So that's one reason, so that the snow will just fall through the tree and not damage it. Um, if leaves didn't fall off deciduous trees, then the liquid in the leaves uh, in winter time would freeze and all the cells would burst and be ruined and next summer the tree wouldn't be able to use its leaves because they would be broken and the tree would die. So uh, there's all kinds of reasons. Um, it, it uses a lot of energy to sort of keep your leaves on. <laughs> so to save energy, because it's not worth having them out because there's not going to be very much sun in the winter time anyway, the trees leave them. The trees leave them. The leaves leave, leave them, you know. Brilliant question that I hadn't thought of. Why do the leaves change colour and then fall? Like, why, do, why don't the green leaves just fall off the trees? Wouldn't that be easier for the tree to just lose all its leaves without bothering with this colour change? Do you think why? It's the same reason that spiders eat their webs to take them down. They eat them and then they build another one. It's like recycling the materials. So uh, chlorophyll, very difficult to make takes a lot of energy, so rather than let it just fall to the ground, the trees bring it all in again. So the green isn't just sort of evaporating off or anything, it's actually going back into the tree, and then in the springtime, it comes out again. How good is that? Right, we're nearly done, actually. Um, I need to talk, so we've talked about how leaves don't exactly change colour, it's just that one of the colours is going away, so the other colour is being revealed. Leaves kind of don't fall off trees. They're being pushed. Oh. So if you really, really, really close up into a leaf stem and a leaf, you would see cells um, 
that are kind of quite long, like across the entrance. And what happens is, as autumn comes, the tree releases hormones, and these, these cells get longer and longer and longer. I can't remember the, the kind of posh science name for them, but they're basically called scissor cells, because what they do is they get longer and longer and longer, and eventually they just snip the leaf off. Yeah, it's not the wind. Obviously the wind helps, like if it's just hanging on by a tiny thread, a gust of wind might blow the leaf away, or the, the weight of the leaf would pull it off. But no, even on a, if there was no wind for weeks and weeks and weeks, the tree's got it sorted. How good is that? That's just, that's just so many facts about trees that absolutely delighted me, this show. Now, if you look up leaf experiment, autumn leaf experiment on the internet, you come across this chromatography activity. Um, it's just, just really complicated and I wasn't sure it would work, so I didn't get you to bring any of the stuff. What you do is you get a leaf, you crush it with a pestle and mortar, and then the stuff that's in the leaves doesn't really dissolve in water so you've got to use rubbing alcohol or nail varnish remover i didn't have that so i used eye makeup remover that's been sitting in the cupboard for years so it's not the chemists i know it's not the same thing but anyway i mixed it with some liquid that wasn't water and then you've got to get a piece of uh, coffee filter and you've got to dab your manky leaf mixture onto the coffee paper leave it to dry and then do it again leave it to dry and do it again leave it to dry and just that goes on forever so you have a really concentrated spot of a leaf pigment on the coffee filter paper and then you might have done chromatography before the idea is you put it in water and the water goes up the coffee filter paper and you see all the different colors that are inside the leaf i'm going i'm looking sarcastic because it hasn't worked for me but i thought you can't take my word for it let's do it and i'll show you <laughs> what a crock it is <laughs> here we go so i have some water here i have my they said to use a holly leaf they said that that would work best they said said the internet so i'm just gonna dangle i've got a little cocktail stick with my coffee filter paper stuck to it oh it's a story time spoiler isn't it you can see story time in the background and yeah we're just gonna let that we'll just let that do its thing she says you know, in quite a sad voice. <laughs> After story time, we'll come back to it and I can prove to you how that experiment is not worth bothering with. I don't know, if you've got nail varnish remover at home and coffee filter papers, you should, you should give it a go, shouldn't you? I want to do it again. <clears throat> anyway, right. Um, I'll do story time and then I'll check through my notes to make sure that I haven't forgotten to tell you anything. But let's take that in there. Bring these along here. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I'm just looking at this person. I can't remember what this person. I've got a Lego person here holding a a plant, and I absolutely cannot remember what she's doing in the story. Anyway, I'm sure all will be revealed. <laughs> uh, come down here. Story time. How are we here? Well, there was a big bang, wasn't there? Uh, which created space and time and stuff, and the stuff eventually clumped together to make stars and planets. But, you know, there are a lot of stars and planets out there. Oh, you can see me on the screen. There are a lot of stars and planets out there in the universe, and we haven't found any evidence of complicated life anywhere. So that doesn't really answer the question, does it? Why are we here? Well, a big part of the answer to that is uh, trees and in fact just one particular tree so in the devonian era nearly 400 million years ago plants had evolved uh, there's no flowers get out you haven't evolved yet plants have evolved to come out of the the sea uh, and water and they're living on land and we know that there are ferns and we know that there are mosses and scientists know that these ferns and mosses are taking in carbon dioxide and giving off oxygen and changing the air of earth in a way that will be incredibly useful to humans later on. Um, suddenly, okay, over about 50 million years, but that's not long in the history of earth, the air goes from being 5% oxygen, which is no use to us, to 20% oxygen, which is about what it is now. Thanks, ancient plants. So if you'd asked scientists to draw a picture of these air-changing plants, they probably would have showed you a landscape that was quite flat. And then a discovery in 1869 changed all that. 
So this that you're looking at on the map here is where uh, Gilboa is. Gilboa is a town in the New York state of America. I don't want to be patronising, um, but I think you could describe it as, as quite a sleepy little town. It's got less than 2,000 people living there now. If you look it up on Wikipedia, you'll find two photographs. One of them is this. I, I don't know either. The other one, well, in 1869, a creek near what was then the village of Gilbauer uh, flooded and destroyed some houses. So workers exploded some rocks. Uh, to get out some rocks to do the repairs. And they found, still upright, just as they'd been when they died about 380 million years ago, two fossilised tree stumps. Building work in 1917 revealed a whole party of tree stumps. Our picture of what we thought the Devonian era looked like, it turns out it was completely wrong. Uh, so Winifred Goldring, who was the paleontologist, of New York State at the time, she scientifically described these tree stumps and fought for them to remain in Gilboa. And they're still there now, dedicated to her memory. So here, here is a picture. Here is the other picture you find on Wikipedia if you look up Gilboa of these incredible tree stumps. But although the Gilboa tree stumps came first, uh, we might have another tree to thank for our existence. Gonna, I just remembered what this guy with the plant is for, but it's actually a man, not a woman. And uh, he has short hair. <clears throat> a young scientist called Sheckler had spent a lot of time studying these fossils around the Gilboa Creek. Um, and eventually he'd become interested in a plant from the Devonian period and travelled to Morocco with his friends, where he found enormous fossils of this plant. In fact, it was a great surprise because it turns out that the plant he'd been studying was actually a tree, and not just any tree. Uh, Arcopteris had huge roots never found on trees of this age before. And testing the fossils, one of his scientist's friends discovered that it had buds on it. No tree this old has ever had buds on. They think this was the only tree around at the time that was capable of growing new leaves after the old ones died. These scientists think, they have actually said this, that this tree changed the world. Having roots, it altered the soil chemistry and it could reach out to dry places that other trees and plants at the time hadn't been able to reach out to. Its huge sprawling branches provided shade, which altered ecosystems, um, and hung over the water. So at this point in history, we know that freshwater fish are changing shape and size. They're really evolving really fast. And we think that the leaf litter from this plant had an awful lot to do with that. Um, and of course, leaf litter falling onto the ground, surely we suspect that has affected microbes and insects living at the time. Um, one of the insects found in Gilboa, one of the traces, was a nearly complete spider spinneret. This is a, so a spider spinneret is uh, what basically sort of comes out near the spider's bum. Um, which is where the silk comes out of. So this is a, this is a diagram of a spinneret. Um, the, it's the earliest, the spinneret found at Gilboa, the fossilised spinneret, is the earliest evidence of silk production. So therefore it's the earliest evidence of spiders. If you do not want to see an extreme close-up of a spider's bum, look away now. And I really mean it. I know you're not looking away, but it, I'm serious. You can't unsee this picture. There's a close-up of a spider's bum coming up in five, four, three. I can't believe I'm showing this. Two, one. There it is. It's, of course, I'm joking. It's not a bum. It's a spinneret. It's just biology. Perfectly reasonable thing to show to children via YouTube. Um, we don't know what these Devonian spiders use their silk for. Maybe they used it for lining their burrows. Maybe they used it for making egg sacs. They didn't use them for catching flies because flies wouldn't evolve for another few million years. Anyway, let's just step away from that. Um, Archaeopteris has been recorded on virtually every known Devonian landmass. So this is what the Earth looked like in the Devonian period. It was growing absolutely everywhere from the tropics uh, to the subpolar regions. And you remember... Um, the air improving scene that we looked at earlier. During this period, the last 15 million years of this beautiful oxygen enriching period, 90% of the forests on earth were 
are copteris trees. Apologies for the pronunciation. Um, they actually became extinct within a very short period of time at the end of the Devonian age. But as Sheckler says, uh, once these ecosystem changes happened, they were changed for all time. It was a one time thing. And what has happened to the remains of these ancient wonders? Well, some of them became coal. They are keeping us warm and running our steam trains once again. Thank you, ancient trees. The end. I'm so, I'm so sorry. I said, when I did this lesson on Facebook this morning, I said, guys, do you think I should take out the close-up of the spider's bum? And one of my favourite comments was, no, if we have suffered, they must suffer. So there you go. It's not, it wasn't me. It was Rowan who said that it was only fair that I also traumatised you with my close-up picture of a spider's bum. Okay, you lot. That is the end of the show on Autumn Leaves. I hope you have enjoyed it. Shall we have a look at our... I was going to say intensely disappointing. Yeah, I think so. Intensely disappointing uh, chromatography experiment. Here we are. Ooh, look at all the all the greenness. Just looking at. I put it on a piece of white paper. Yeah, I don't know. I'm I'm happy with my little drawing dots on a piece of paper activity, personally. But you're welcome. Now you don't have to draw it yourself, so you don't want to. Um, as usual, you know that if you want to keep me going, because this is my actual job now. It take I mean it has to be because it takes ages, and I love it. But I do have to have money to do my job. Um, so thank you very much to all the people who are giving me five pounds a month. Five pounds a month from most people watching it's enough for me to be able to do a lego story time show like this one and an all ages homework lesson and an igcse physics lesson every week and produce theater of science magazine which is what i send you to say massive thanks uh, for supporting me so if you go to my about section and you press the link to coffee then uh, you can get theater of science magazine in your hand very soon this one's on time so you get a sundial craft. I'm just looking at the sky like, why did I do a sundial? Shh, doesn't matter. You can use it next year. Uh, it's got a comic about a family who sold time in London. It's got an article on Einstein's theory of special relativity. If you didn't understand the beginning of the film Lightyear, no spoilers. Um, yeah, I'm just super proud of Theatre Science Magazine. And I'll send you some rainbow glasses as well and explain how they work. And I will, I will lavish you with nice things. <laughs> because I'm so grateful. I can't believe it's working that I just do everything for free and enough people are uh, paying me that, that it could be a job. I'm just, uh, oh, I've got some comments just coming to my Facebook page because uh, as usual on Facebook, I've put a little post up saying, if you want to say hello, then you can. Oh, nice, it's Quentin and Hugo and Monty. Hello, Quentin and Hugo and Monty. And Suki and Arthur and Eunice. All right, chaps, oh, that's nice, isn't it? Two people watching and that's actually six. No! Oh, and Tyne, and Noah, and Sailor. Amazing. That's got to be a record. Three comments, nine people. We can't find you on YouTube. We can find the Theatre of Science page via the link above, but nothing about this stream. Oh, roving. Yeah, I must admit, I have the same problem. I need to do... How did... Mm. If you're watching and you're commenting, how do you find it? Because I've never been able to work that out. Do you have to go to the live section? Do you go to the video section? Or do you just go to my homepage? I could experiment and do it myself. I know that I could. I will. But if you want to comment and tell me, that would be great. Uh, okay, so I'm going to go off now and reply to Roving and say, hope you found it. Sorry, I don't know either. Brilliant customer service. That's what you pay me for. All right, you lot. Thank you very much for coming. How many? I think we've only got about three shows left until Christmas, you know. So we need to work out what those will be. I feel like as a Christmas present, I should do another dinosaur one because we haven't done dinosaurs for ages and you keep asking me. Um, but yeah, I'll have a think. So if not, I'll see you for Home Ed next week, which is on hand washing and how germs spread and how we stop them spreading and a Lego story time show, which is yet to be announced. Uh, thank you so much for your support, you lot. I'll see you very soon. Bye.